Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of a new series we are calling How to Draw Awesome Animals with Peppermint Narwhal. In this video series, we will select a new species each time, and we'll show you how to draw that animal in a fun and simple way. As we're sketching, we'll share some interesting facts about the species. So whether you love to draw, or even if you're intimidated by drawing, I think if you follow along, you'll be very impressed with the end result. So let's take a look at the animal that we've selected to draw today. Oh, and by the way, happy Narwhal Day. If you weren't aware, today, April 10th, is Narwhal Day. So to celebrate, we're obviously selecting one of our favorite animals, and the mascot, and our mascot, is, of course, the narwhal. This animal has become very popular over recent years, but if you're not familiar, the narwhal is an Arctic whale known for its impressive tusk, which all males have. As we illustrate any animal on peppermint narwhal, we like to give you a little bit of information to get to know it better. So we've listed that below for this species. The narwhal is again the common name, and you may even hear people say narwhal. Both are accepted. Different parts of the world may prefer one over the other. In the parentheses here, we have what's called the scientific name. Scientific names are given to every species to be very unique. One scientific name for one species. So if you're using a scientific name, you always know which species you're talking about without confusion. Whereas sometimes common names can overlap or, or be very vague. So the, the scientific name for the narwhal is Monodon monoceros. And that comes from the Greek language, which basically translates into one tooth, one horn. So considering that impressive tusk, you can see how I got that name. Below you'll see it lists here, least concern. That comes from a, st a conservation status, which you would find on the IUCN's red list of threatened species. So least concern for extinction is a very good status, and we're happy to see that with the narwhal. Okay, we're ready to get started. Uh, now that we know what the animal looks like and we've gotten a little uh, familiar with some of the details of it, we're gonna go ahead and start drawing. All you're gonna need is uh, something to draw on and something to draw with. In my case, I have here just a pencil and a paper. I like to use pencil because it's fairly forgiving and you can draw a little bit lighter. You have the eraser, so you have a lot of options here and it's also a very easy tool to find around the house. We're gonna start by drawing a circle. You can draw it a little bit light, just a little bit off the center there. And that's gonna give you what's gonna become the head of our narwhal. So once we've got our circle sort of set in there, we're going to start to put in the body. And the body, we're just gonna kind of curve it like this, almost like a big smiley face shape here. And sometimes when uh, we're drawing early on, I'd advise people to almost put in dots if you give you a little extra confidence or something to aim at as you're making your gesture drawing. So there I've got the sort of the low point and the high point and the origin point. So now we're just going to start from here and instead of, our, we're basically making our own connect the dots, but instead of uh, making straight lines, we're gonna make these sort of nice flowing curved lines to aim at those dots that we've given ourselves. So there we go, that's gonna give us the back of the narwhal. Now we need to do the underside, which is essentially gonna be the same gesture, just a little bit longer and a bigger curve to that uh, drawing. So I'm gonna put a dot here on the circle I'll put another one about here for the lower point of the body. And then as we taper, the, the, the body sort of tapers as it works its way towards the tail fluke. So we'll put this one a little closer to the other one, not exactly touching, but much closer than the other dots. And then again, that same sort of nice curving drawing. And if you miss one of your dots, that's not the end of the world. You can always correct it. Uh, just do another drawing line there and then maybe erase what you don't like or just reinforce it with a darker line. That's why sometimes working lighter is nice. All right, that gives us the overall cigar shape, which is very common with this species. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in how it gets around and, and basically that's what's called the tail fluke. Now the tail fluke of the narwhal, uh, you, this one there is probably something I won't need to teach you too much because you're probably very confident drawing this shape. So you can see here I'm drawing a heart. Uh, so at the top of our tail, we're just gonna kind of fit a heart in there. And that's gonna be a real nice, uh, almost most of the, the tail fluke uh, sort of drawing. Now we need to put in the, the basically what's called the tail fluke tips. And those are actually on kind of where this heart drawing would be. We'll put them on the outside, middle of the outside we're just gonna kind of make these notches here. Almost look like a thorn or something that we would have on a, uh, if we were drawing the stem of a rose. So that's where those are. And if you want, you can even erase the inside of that line there. So basically you would have this sort of gesture here where a kind of notch comes up and then it bows way out, almost like a big hill here. 
and then comes, uh, or sorry, this is what's called the trailing edge. And as it reaches the notch, you can see it makes it almost like a big mound. And again, repeats itself on the other side. So if you were to compare this to a, a dolphin tail, which I'll draw here pretty quickly, you don't need to draw this portion. And, uh, but just to show you the anatomy differences of the two, uh, dolphin tails are something we're all probably very commonly familiar with, another popular animal. But you can see here are those tips again, and here are the tips here. But you can see how they're very distinctly different. These are very high set, and then the trailing edge kind of gradually moves in an S-curve, tucking into the notch. Whereas again, here we have the tail tip, fluke tips here, and then this real big bowing as it works to the notch. So you can definitely see the difference between the two drawings. This is a good looking narwhal tail. This is a very definitive dolphin tail. All right, so that's how an animal will use to drive itself forward and build propulsion. This big muscle group on a whale is called the peduncle, and it uses this to sort of paddle the tail fluke up and down and move forward in the water. Now, how it steers is it uses two other fins that are on one on either side of the body, and these are what's called the pectoral fins. And I'm just gonna draw a little oval here just to the right of our big circle on the underside of the body here. And that's gonna kind of give us a frame of reference of where that's going to go. Now, pectoral fins of narwhals are quite small. Uh, something like a humpback would have very large ones. Different whales have large to small pectoral fins, and of course the narwhal again is on the small side. So now that I've got that circle there, I can kind of use that as a reference. We're just going to kind of use the underside of the circle to draw kind of a, a nice, almost smiley shape here. And then from here, we're just going to use the top of the circle here or the oval, but we're going to just not quite complete that. We're going to actually make it go down a little bit, a little curving line down, leaving a bit open here. And then much like how we did that notch, we're just going to kind of make a, a little kind of cusp shape here and tuck that in, you can even exaggerate that in, because basically the pectoral fin curls upward at the end of it. Narwhal's uh, pectoral fins are very distinctive as they curl upward, so that kind of captures that short pectoral fin with a curving end. All right, we've got a nice uh, looking body uh, design here, mostly anatomy covered. Now we can kind of focus on the face. So one of the distinct characteristics of the narwhal is of course an eye. Most animals, that's especially mammals, we really kind of identify with the eye. So we're Narwhal eyes are very small and set a little bit back and behind the mouth a little low. So in our circle here, we're going to put our narwhal eye right about here. Uh, all you need to do is just draw a little circle or a little oval, uh, and then you can kind of darken it in uh, to give it uh, a little more distinction. I'm going to leave the center of that uh, uncolored in, and that's going to give me a nice sort of uh, highlight by leaving the white of the paper. Okay, so there we've got our eye. We've got the narwhal shape coming together. Now we're going to put in the mouth. Narwhals have a sort of small mouth. Again, some whales have huge mouths, uh, whereas uh, the this specific whale has a, quite a small one, and it's known for just sucking in its food. So we like to make happy animals here for uh, on peppermint narwhals, so we're going to just give it a nice little smiley face. And then at the top end of the smile, we're just going to add this other little curving shape here, upside down, uh, sort of curved gesture, and that kind of indicates a nice dimply smile. So there we go, we've got that sort of happy face narwhal. Uh, we've pretty much drawn that. If you want to get rid of the outer edge of this circle here, uh, there you go. You've pretty much got yourself already a, a nice female narwhal if you'd be done at that point. But we're going to go ahead and uh, do that male narwhal and cover that distinctive gesture that we know uh, as the tusk. So just about where you would put a nose on this animal. I'm gonna draw a little uh, oval here. Again, this isn't a nose, this is actually a tooth. Uh, it actually comes through the upper lip, so ouch, can you imagine that on yourself? But that's how the narwhal does it. Uh, basically, it's left incisor actually breaks through the upper skin and then sticks out. And these tusks can be fairly large. They can be about uh, easily eight feet, sometimes as long as 10 or even 12 feet. So I'm gonna put a point out here. That's gonna be the tip of my tusk. And you can make yours as, bit, as far out or as close in as you like. The older males uh, would be uh, typically longer, whereas a younger male would have a shorter one. So now that I've got my oval here, I'm going to put a dot at the top of the oval and a dot at the bottom. And the reason I'm doing that is to help you just sort of uh, align these. this point. You're essentially going to draw and connect the dots here. And this time you're going to do that sort of standard connect the dots sort of straight line. So there we go. I've got my straight line connecting that outer one. And now I'm going to kind of come down here and connect that lower one. And there we go. We've got our tusk. I'm going to just erase some of these 
other lines in here again the nice thing about the uh, pencil and I'll sort of flesh that out so the narwhal tusk is very distinctively unique uh, it actually is the only uh, rotating or curving tusk in the animal kingdom and I'm putting these little curves here to indicate that counterclockwise rotation that would be common on this tooth so that really gives you that distinct narwhal sort of uh, feel with that sort of rotating tusk there so we could pretty much call this done if we'd like, but I'm going to add some additional details that are common on whales. Uh, basically, it's called counter shading. So we're going to, and counter shading is essentially darker on the top, lighter on the bottom. And we're going to start indicating that by drawing a little curve here just above the tusk and the mouth. And then before the eye, we'll finish it. And then we'll draw another higher curve, like almost like a little hill going around the eye. And then from that end point, we're going to now draw a little movement that dips down to the uh, pectoral fin and then kind of comes to the lower portion of the body. Doesn't matter exactly where you do it. We just like to end a little bit before uh, we don't need to go all the way to the tail with that. So again, this is called counter shading. And on the narwhal, this would be uh, darker on the top. If you're coloring this in later with a different color, you can use a dark color. I'm just gonna use some cross hatching to indicate that it's a little darker. And the bottom will just leave white because that would be very uh, white. Counter shading is a nice camouflage for whales because in the water, if you were underwater and looked up, you would see a bright light of the sun. And that tends to be very white or bright colors. If you're looking down, things get very dark darker colored. So when an animal is above it and looking down and seeing this darker colored, the narwhal would almost be invisible. And if a, a predator was below it looking up, this underside white would help it blend into the shining colors of the, or the brightness of the, the sun. So there we go. We've got that counter shading in there. Now I'm going to add another important detail that really distinguishes narwhals. As you see, I'm just, and you don't have to worry about where you put these. You kind of can play around here. I'm just making these little oval shapes splotches this the narwhal is actually often called model pattern which basically means these splotchy spots uh, that the body that it has all over the body and these uh, blotchy spots or modeling basically gave it the animal its name uh, in fact norris sailors uh, would actually call the animal narwhal in old norris language and that basically translates to corpse whale and when they would see this sort of grayish white animal, grayish blue colors with these sort of dappling white spots, uh, they thought it resembled something that was dead and been floating in the water for a while. So that's how it got its name Corpse Whale. So there we go. We've got a nice, happy narwhal drawing. Uh, if you show it to anybody, you definitely get that they would know it's a narwhal. If they weren't familiar with the animal, please spread the word. It's a really cool species. It's not a mythical creature. It's a definite living animal. In fact, the unicorn actually comes from the narwhal tusk. Uh, that's how that uh, myth got started. But the narwhal is a real animal. And we'd love to see your real drawing. So uh, please share that with us. Uh, I'm sure you're probably impressed with the end result if you followed along. And if you can, we'd love to see you share that with us. You can do that by posting it online and use the hashtag MintySketch. And that way we'll check it out and we'd love to see your creations. So give us a, a, also a suggestion for a future episode. You can do that by meeting, uh, sending us a message on social media if there's an animal you'd like to spotlight. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode. Thanks.